ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome. My name is Elizabeth Borowski, and I will be the pianist for today's performance, along with the acclaimed cellist Cecilia Barczyk, who I know as Mother. <laughs> <laughs> I serve as the Vice President of the Board of Classicopia, the wonderful organization that is hosting today's concert. Um, how many people have been to a Classicopia performance before? Welcome back. And who is here to, for the first time? Welcome. <laughs> we hope that you will return again. In fact, later on I'll be telling you about some of our upcoming events. Classicopia is based here in the Upper Valley and brings music to the community as a way for us to strengthen our community as well. Many of the performances are in churches and community centers. Some are also in homes. So it's a very intimate experience in which we love getting to interact with you as well. Well, today we are so grateful for this opportunity to come together on so many levels. This is still one of our very first performances after nearly two years of a hiatus from touring and performing. And we are grateful for what we do and the opportunity to share it live, not through a screen. Um, at the same time, we are also grateful to celebrate the good of humankind. The last three weeks, three and a half weeks, have been very heavy, very difficult. And, and there is no way for me to, to describe what I feel. All I can say is that as musicians, so much of our job is to feel to communicate feelings, to express feelings, to feel deeply, and simply as human beings, we feel a lot, much less as musicians who have had the good fortune of traveling around the world, including to Ukraine, meeting with their people, and becoming friends with them as well. Um, this program celebrates the joy uh, uh, and the beauty that music can provide, and it's important for us to remember that and to celebrate that and to hold fast to that. I'd like to turn things over to my mother who will speak a little bit about the first piece on today's program. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here again and see so many of you, so many music lovers. Um, the program has been sort of constructed around the idea that music is, has, yes, feeling to communicate and very often very dramatic feelings, but sometimes also something light and positive. So this particular program is around, constructed around this idea that music in our reality now should also provide some spiritual vitamins. <laughs> so hopefully after the concert you will come, go out uplifted and happy mm -hmm. and uh, not just um, experience as, as another somber reality. It's not going to be very dramatic and somber music, right? So this is how I chose, select, made the selection. Um, Opera has been very, uh, ever since Baroque era, has been the, the beloved genre of music. First, for the privileged classes, but already in the classical era, at the end of 18th centuries, and then especially during the 19th century, it became a very popular genre, which was eventually equivalent to our cinema today. In 19th century, every city would have several opera houses to which people could go with the upper idea of being entertained and hearing some beautiful arias. And when they liked something, they clapped so much and requested repetition of the arias so they could eventually memorize them. And they would sing them at home, especially the Italian people. <laughs> and it was all also quite um, common that composers, including great composers who could use their own ideas, borrowed the theme of arias, popular arias, and used them as a theme for their variations. And this is a case of two compositions in our program today. 
the first one being the 12 variations by Beethoven and the theme from Judas Maccabeus, not an opera but an oratorio, but oratorio was almost like an opera on stage without the scenery. Uh, Beethoven was a great admirer of Handel, and when he, as a 26 years old, uh, still youth, you could say, young man, uh, was invited to the court of Joseph Wilhelm II, the King of Prussia, um, uh, to Berlin, he um, honored his uh, honored the king by composing a few pieces for cello and piano, which the king could play himself because he was an amateur cellist. So this set of variations belongs to these, as well as the first, first and second sonata by Beethoven. You may recognize the theme. I'm almost sure that you will. Sometimes it is being used for a church song, which is sang during Easter. So it may sound familiar. Now, 12 variations, right? And I'm the soloist. And yet Beethoven gives me the theme only in the 10th variation. And it will sound beautiful and rich, and you'll think that's the end of the piece. Don't get fooled, because after, the, after I play the theme variations, there are still two more variations. Okay? So enjoy. 